so sir if you allow shall we start almost half of our participants our uh, summer school participants have joined we are expecting 100 110 uh, yeah, yeah. so they will be uh, you know they will be joining in between somewhere right yeah yeah no issue yes so yes, yes. Uh, we'll take time if we keep waiting uh, we can go ahead Yeah, yeah, it will take time. It will take definitely take time. Yeah. So. Okay, so we will start. Very good evening, everyone. So, as you know, uh, our summer uh, school from Climate side is a specific course and a specific training module for our pharmacy students. where uh, pharmacy students from all the streams like b farm and farm d are joining to you know get trained in multidisciplinary uh, learnings like um, leadership skills communication skills specific softwares clinical trials biostatistics and other than that they are interacting with our leaders from pharmacy uh, industry pharmaceutical industry and from the top colleges academicians so uh, this is a interaction uh, with top a level corporates and academicians here in our climate summer school so this is the third webinar under climate uh, summer school leadership dialogues so today uh, to discuss about the career scopes for pharmacy students we have a uh, professor uh, dr mohammad salahuddin sir so dr salahuddin is uh well yeah so yes dr salahuddin is professor and principal at farooqia college of pharmacy mysore he was born in raichur in uh, the year of 1976 he completed his b farm m farm and phd from vi college of pharmacy raichur he has more than 15 years of academic and industry experience Dr Mohammad Salahuddin has received 40 lakh grant for collaborative research work from DRDO he has two patent registered he has 29 publications with a cumulative impact factor of 7.63 of his research work in national and international journals he is an approved guide for m farm and phd of rajiv gandhi institute of rajiv gandhi university of health science bangalore till now he has supervised 17 pg student of RGUHS Dr Salahuddin has delivered many lectures as resource persons in various institutions workshops and conferences and also chaired many sessions he has attended many national and international conferences he has served as head examination control of faculty of pharmacy Omar al Mukhtar University Libya recently the government of Karnataka through drug control department DCD has nominated Mr uh, Dr Muhammad Salahuddin as member board of examining authority BEA Bangalore the ba is an uh, examining authority responsible for carrying out admissions and examinations of d farm course under dcd government of karnataka presently uh, dr mohammad salahuddin is serving as chairman board of studies ug pharmacy rguhs bangalore academic counseling member and faculty member pharmacy rguhs bangalore assistant editor for rgps journal of rgu Uh, HS, external member of US, B farm, Jena Bay University, member, member uh, board of examining authority, DCD, Government of Karnataka, General Secretary, Karnataka State Pharmacy College Principals Association, Bangalore, Vice President, IPA, Mysore Branch, Coordinator, South Zone ABTI, India, Advisory Board Member, HS, DAR Center, Mysore, Advisory Member, Karnataka Registered Pharmacy Association, uh, Mysore, Vice President, PTA, Saint Joseph School, Mysore. He is actively involved in many social and community activities as well. Chief Patron for Farooqia College of Pharmacy Alumni Association, Mysore. President Alumni Association of VL Pharmacy uh, College of Pharmacy, Raichur. President uh, KSAME Association, Mysore. President Association of Muslim Professionals, Mysore. Life member of APTI and IPA. So I uh, welcome you, sir, uh, to our workshop, to our leadership dialogue, as an eminent leader. you're welcome thank you very much for uh, accepting our uh, invitation and uh, to deliver one uh, talk to our students on the career scope thank you very much sir now it's uh, you know over to you sir uh thank you dr rajit uh, for uh, that elaborate uh, introduction about me to the august audience pharmacists young uh, 
upcoming generation pharmacists it's always uh, uh, exciting to talk to the young pharmacists who look forward to look for their life change bring up something different uh, into the profession and uh, the good thing is that uh, they are utilizing their much of their time during this lockdown period to study more about the profession and the challenges and i'm happy to see that more than 110 people and i think probably more than uh, 150 plus have registered uh, that itself shows that how much they are all interested in order to know the challenges the prospects and how different they can acquire to the different positions of the pharmacist and i feel so happy uh, to participate today and to talk to the young pharmacists let me take this opportunity before me starting uh, you know my lecture let me share my presentation uh, yes sir sure is it visible uh, dr ajit uh, yes it is coming sir yeah go across yes. i'll okay. just pin it yes so, yes it has come already. i'll just go across to share my slides okay is it coming full um it's fine sir it's fine yeah, yeah it's fine sir now uh, okay uh, i am not able to make it because i am i faced the other day also with the news uh, where they use the google uh, probably google meet has some technical issue or maybe with my system or something compatibility is missing no issue uh, we have joined over here to meet the you know make up that how best we are going to uh, you know interact and uh, see that uh, uh, something for which we have joined over here to learn about the career scope for parts right sir uh, dear uh, students Uh, first of all i would like to congratulate you for choosing this wonderful profession and uh, then i would like to thank uh, dr ajit uh, singh and also his entire team uh, wonderfully during this lockdown period i have seen that the climate uh, was at the forefront to bring up the uh, you know the clinical pharmacies in particular as well as the pharmacies uh, to make them learn the newer things introduce them to the newer concept of the knowledge apart from that today you can see they have got the leaders where you can interact with them see them how different the leaders have made the impact and created where the ways are being made for the profession i don't have to talk much about the pharmacy because you are already in the profession but still uh, there are a lot of students who has chosen the profession but still they feel that okay i have chosen a wrong line and i may not be happy in my life probably you are wrong in your thoughts you have to reassess your line of the thoughts and you should see that where you are standing and how valuable you are in the pharmacy profession i was saying you are valuable because the demand that is existing and growing probably you are not aware of it today in the next one hour expand it the opportunities have been created and how valuable you are how valuable you are the word i am using you are the rolling coin for the pharma industry and where do you stand how do you take up the challenge that lies on you how best you prepare for that if you are a second year student third year student or pharmacy fifth and sixth probably you have to make yourself involved into the professional activities see that before you complete the job is in your hand i have to say that we have heard that this was there with the pharmaceutical this was there with the software industry where a person used to pursue his engineering and by the end of the year course curriculum whether in the fourth year or the fifth year the person used to have a job in his hand however it was there in other fields also including the pharmacy where the reputed institutions used to conduct the interviews campus interviews and the people used to get the placements but today's scenario is not about the best it is not about the engineering it is about the pharmacist and how valuable you are you need to understand you have to take up this note today 
and today in this one hour i would like to take you to a journey of the requirements the competitions the available avenues and where do you stand to, to grab these chances and i'm sure that with the, my presentation you are going to have a very brief limelight of the entire profession and you will definitely feel a sigh of relief and the confidence that yes i am in the right choice and i am in the right profession that's how it is going to be thank you to the uh, the entire climate team especially their leader dr ajit j singh for giving, giving me an opportunity and especially for starting this climate summer school as i said lockdown has impacted everything but climate has not stopped they somehow brought in all the professionals onto a single platform a lot of activities he did he provided the information on the vaccines to create you know to uh, give uh, to er eradicate the myths and myths of the vaccines that was having into the people he got many of the experts he has created a lot of information hub through the climate and through this climate summer school where you know he has started in order to show that we have the research solutions can be brought in and he is now conducting the leadership dialogues a platform where the a class leaders of the academics and the industry is going to speak to you thanks that he has considered me as a a class leader of the academia but i feel that i am a small pharmacist who has a responsibility to show my fellow young upcoming generation pharmacists to give them the best knowledge about the profession which i am sure if they become confident enough about the profession i don't have to bother we don't have to bother where our profession is going to be then today if we are going to call india as a you know the pharma hub a country where pharmaceutical sector is on the top and entire world is dependent probably we are going to grab that and continue that to be at the forefront and we are going to be in the top and today i am going to speak to you people on the career scope for pharmacy students though probably you are all pharmacists but still you are with your calls your doubts i am here to clear but i would like to say that when i am talking about for every for every of the world for every of the uh, you know the uh, the the act that is been given like climate science summer school an initiative of climate research solutions leadership dialogues a platform to interact with leaders if i am speaking today for career for scope for pharmacy students i am going to give this hashtag where pleasure meets the service that means you need to act. you need to look into that you are going to have a pleasure with the service to which you are going to impart in your profession be proud to be associated with this profession so let us continue with it but before going to make my presentation i would like to inform over here for you all is that the presentation that i am giving is this is my own opinion and it is not from the association or the organization to which i am associated with an entire presentation is been provided from the authenticated resources that are available and all the resources are available anyone needs that okay you have provided so and so information i need the reference of so and so i am going to provide to it and some of the images which i am showing in this presentation it is purely taken from the public domain or the open sources to make this lecture this you know the delivery delivery of my lecture very simple and understanding i am going to talk in my today's presentation on the four heads of the topics like what is the pharmacies and its demand and supply you need to understand to that i'm sure during this presentation the way wherever you are sitting and listening to my talk i'm sure that definitely at least your chest if it is 50 inches it will become 52 inches okay that at least i would like to guarantee you is that yes i am in a profession where i feel proud to be part of it opportunities for the pharmacies challenges ahead yes when you feel the confidence of it you should also know that what are the challenges you have to which if you are preparing to yourself during this student era i am sure you are the rolling point for any form of the job in the pharmaceutical sector and what take home message you are going to have today you need to understand in my entire presentation so be with me for the next 50 minutes well 
you are in the profession by this time you might have realized that what is the profession what is the pharmacist and what you are going to do as a pharmacist well this pandemic has definitely taught all of us that how pharmacist has become a rolling coin has become a demand how has become a you know the requirement for the healthcare sector well the pharmacist way it was delivering the services only as a community pharmacy has become the requirement of most of the public where they got involved got into the interaction including including the you know the services which the public you know has uh, you know looked into it and they have understood it that yes this is the profession where and i must say that with the pharmacist definition when i am going to talk about well it is all a common where you should understand that it is when we talk about probably people who have come for admission also many of the times they used to think that the parents when they used to come sir pharmacist means only a person who works in a you know the medical store that was the layman's language i must say but whereas as a pharmacist i would like to say it's a pharmacy or a pharmacy store where the people used to work that is the only the concept people had in the, their mind and they used to think that pharmacy means they used to do it but as the roles have advanced and the definition itself it gives that the pharmacist which has the profession to provide the knowledge or the preparation of the medication and what they do is that they dispense the medication they are doing the counseling to the patient and they are advising to the physicians the bigger role that the pharmacist has played during the pandemic time also before they had it they advise the physicians what type of medication you need to give in what type of disease and the other healthcare practitioners or the professionals when i talk about the other healthcare practitioners and for practitioners and professionals we were interacting with the doctors we were interacting with the nurses we were interacting with the other allied health people also like you know the technicians lab technician x ray technician and all forms of the healthcare professionals were interacting with the pharmacists that's how during this time the more of the role of the pharmacists has been identified and probably it is because we are more knowledgeable about the medication when i talk about more knowledgeable about the medication on what sense it is about we were knowing about what dosage to be given we were knowing about what the adrs adverse drug reactions interactions and side effects of the medicines that is where we were teaching to the healthcare professionals you know in the healthcare professional when i talk doctor is the highest to be regarded respect and we have seen that whenever we are talking about the covid it is the first name that the public takes is about the doctor and to these doctors who are advising about the medications who are giving the knowledge about the medications it is the pharmacists so have feel proud that it is we people who provided direct information about the medication how to prescribe how to give away the you know the medication sir please unmute yourself i think by mistake and you have i don't know why it got muted is it okay yeah yes sir yes no. yeah 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 okay, okay. so uh, because i got a message that's why i was little worried okay so is it okay visible am i am i my slides are visible yes sir your slides are visible yes, you are yes, perfectly yes, perfect yeah, sir yeah 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 okay so uh, probably because i am on the other window i am not able to see the other people sorry for this uh, this is how the no no worries no worries sir no worries no okay. worries sir so here all the services our pharmacists provided uh, is it is an attempt to see that how the rational drug therapy which is to be safe it is to be effective and economic entire services whether it is a doctor nurse physician or uh, the physiotherapist or entire medical fraternity that looks after it is nothing but we would like to see the safety of the patient and that's where our major major role is there okay that's how okay we we were also used to be called earlier chemist and druggist where such type of words cannot be used now however it was there and now chemist and druggist chemist can be considered as a 
chemical scientist who knows the chemical composition of matter that makes up a substance that was there the, the roles have evolved now it has been limited only to a pharmacy and pharmacist and druggist on the other hand is mainly involved in distribution of medicines preparation according to the prescription of the doctors we all had the more of the manpower to be done by a pharmacist but with the advent of the technology preparation of the medications and that's how our role has evolved we in spite of you know being called pharmacists our roles are you know di diverse dynamic and i can say that uh, when we call about the pharmacists the roles have evolved and it has changed a lot into many instances let me take across to many india uh, as you all know that this one of the things before going me taking you to the various aspects been available let me take across when do we stand as a pharmacist as in the country what is the bigger things are happening well you all might have heard from the news the channels the newspaper that has told that the america has asked the indian government to provide the medications the supply of vaccines i must say that over the last one year the indian image throughout the world has been known as a pharma a country where only pharmaceutical products are more of been available and they are taking care of the world and it is been available if you see across i'm just giving a figure of how different it has happened from 2019 to 2021 by 2019 we will we were exporting the medications particularly the generic drugs up to dollar 15 billion we were doing it the business but during this pandemic time if you see there is a double of the figure that we have crossed we are making a business of almost 24.5 billion and this is the data which is been available by april 2021 imagine the business that has been involved when we are talking when we are talking that during this lockdown period the entire businesses how we stopped and there is uh, you know the entire uh, work force has been stopped there is no business there is no money but you know that it was the only pharma sector which is working day and night and it is the only business which was running the petroleum industry was stopped the entire i must say that the food processing industry was not working the institutions were not working but you know there was only one field that was working it was a pharma sector right from its production to the availability of medication to the retail to the patient it was entirely process of the pharmaceutical sector that has worked and we could see that there is a double jump of the business that we did in india and we exported almost to the tune of 25 billion by april 2021 and here i would like to show one of the slide is that india uh as uh, you know the pharma exported almost uh, 18% you know the rise in the uh, you know the export and we have done almost to the tune of 24.44 million that's what i said 24.5 million in this pandemic year and that's the change this is one of the news highlight that was there in the business today and uh, i would like to say over here is that india ranked third worldwide in the pharmaceutical production and uh, in the volume and 14 by value this was there from these statistics might have changed during this one year the way our export was increased the way we looked into providing the medications to the different countries these statistics has changed i must say that one thing whatever the export that has happened well before the pandemic indians was considered the indian products was considered that every third tablet that was considered that was been consumed throughout the world was made in india it is what been said and it is because india has established almost the domestic pharmaceutical industry with a strong network of 3000 drug manufacturing countries you know the companies to of the you know the uh, almost all types of the top world manufacturing industries are you know the available in india and we have more than 10500 manufacturing units so you imagine the workforce you know in some of the countries even two manufacturing units are not available many of the citizens of their countries keep asking us sir how to establish it how the resources to be made available and in india almost to the tune of 10500 and still it is growing and i must say that probably after this pandemic the way the demand has increased for the medications maybe additional 2 to 3000 manufacturing units will come up in the coming years and the state government the government of india and as well as the state governments is encouraging the you know coming up to this 
the hubs of the pharmaceutical in every state the pharmaceutical hub has been created where i must say it, it's a park pharma pharma park that's how they have given the name where they are creating a separate uh, area where the manufacturing units can come up and they can start manufacturing quality medications if this happens then more affordable medications will be available in our country as such if you compare the medicine the other day one of the one of my friend had called and was asking what is the cost of the you know the remdesivir in your country and you know probably the i'm not talking about at what rate the medicine was sold in black but it was 5000 rupees if you say in the retail 3000 to earlier it started with 2800 then many manufacturers changed because of the demand probably up to 4000 we might have sold but you know that in other country the real price is itself is 50000 rupees every medication is almost three times what we get in our country we are blessed to be in our country and we are fortunate to be in this profession where we are providing affordable medicines to our own country people that's how the demand well we have seen the demand has increased because our contributions was unlimited during this pandemic time and i have been keep telling that when i tell about the pharmacies the sectors in which we are being you know doing service that is innumerous and we have played as a man power in every sector to see that we can give the best of the best service to most of our country citizens and see that our health stays the best and if i say that when i talk about pharmacies it is not pharmacies only you as a student me as a teacher or any other professional we call collectively in different areas where they are contributing if i say that almost to the tune of 12 and a half lakh pharmacies has taken care of 130 crores of this country's population hats off to all those 12 and a half lakh pharmacies during this lockdown period and if i segregate them almost 9 lakh community pharmacies they have delivered day and night they give the services and till today also when there is a lockdown in the entire most of the states it is the pharmacies who are working day and night to see that the affordable medicines can be made you know to uh, available to the pharmacies industrial pharmacies there was a huge pressure as there was a lacking of the medications as just now i spoke about remdesivir there are many other medications which was not available and there was a pressure on the industry pharmacies also to increase the production work instead of 8 hours work for 16 hours and see that most of the medications are available so that many of the people who are dying because of the shortage of the medications can be saved hats off to all these people also who have done an excellent job academic pharmacies when this entire you know the profession has stopped it is the teachers i must say that this is another form of the platform that has been created and uh, this pandemic has taught that which was not possible during this normal time it has taught that okay virtually also you can be connected with your students and teachers can be part of this you know imparting education and academic pharmacies almost to the tune of 60000 in our country they sticked on to it and they started teaching providing the information and continues of educational you know the curriculum development activity happened and we have seen that excellent services has been rendered by academic pharmacies and hospital pharmacies almost around 50000 uh, pharmacies which are available in the corporate hospitals government hospitals they gave their best services apart from that the regulatory pharmacies they played a very vital role i must salute to all these people you might have seen that this during the second wave these regulatory pharmacies they played an excellent role in every state there was a you know the covid uh, war room is been created so that these regulatory pharmacies like you know assistant drug inspectors assistant drug controller drug controller drug inspectors they all have been deputed and they have been done in such a way that in a very systematic way so that black marketing of the medications can be stopped and they all have prevented so that an ethical way of distribution of medications can happen and a right medication reaches to the farm you know the patient that's the service we did if all these things is been seen by seeing all this way and i am seeing the response to it also as a head of the institution i am seeing that the demand of the profession has gone to the 10 times people wanted now a hey, everyone who are now looking here and there the engineering or the medicine and all they are inquiring that okay we we wanted to join to the pharmacy profession the demand that has been created it is because the services that we have rendered during this lockdown period has enhanced the value of the profession and that's where we are going to see and feel proud 
you have already joined to do this profession and you are going to have a lot of advantages in the coming days well the pharmacist ratio has still more increased the demand has still more increased because if we see across the services to be rendered in the healthcare sector present in present scenario we have a doctor patient ratio of about 1953 people and almost at present if we see it is 1681 for one doctor and as you know that when i talk about doctor doctor needs a pharmacist that means indirectly it is one pharmacist available for 1681 to the people public or patient i must say which is expected to come down only by 2030 though in one way i am talking that this is this is whatever i am speaking the ratio it is about the urban areas or in the cities and but still the situation is very much pathetic when it comes to rural areas or hilly regions where the availability of the healthcare professionals including doctors is very very pathetic and i have seen that there you don't get doctors you get the quacks or the people who knows medical knowledge medicine knowledge and they are acting as a doctor and they are the masiya for those people also i don't know i must say this is an unethical or this is a good way of working but this is what in our country it is happening that's where we have to work very efficiently to provide the better healthcare services when i talk about our country well globally also i would like to give a data that as per who by 2030 when in, in their 2019 fip news they have released that there is going to be an additional shortage of 18 million healthcare jobs when i say that 18 million healthcare jobs it involves the pharmacists and nursing and there is a huge ratio of pharmacists requirement to over the world how we are going to compensate to this shortage who are going to make this shortage compensation it is nothing but it is we the pharmacists it is you the pharmacists who are going to take up the responsibility as a pharmacist either in community industry clinical or in academia it is you who are going to play an important role in improving the access of this healthcare of the medicines and the closing the gap that i have given the ratio with the potential benefit of medicines and actual value that is what you are going to create as a pharmacist and i would like to also highlight one of the very important aspect wherein that has given more power to the pharmacist well you should remember also that the pharmacy council of india under the dynamic leadership leadership of our dr b suresh has created wonderful platform value to the pharmacist and you all as i said if your chest size is 50 it will become 52 inch because this is one thing which i would like to highlight the pharmacy practice regulations which has been implemented and been approved through the gadget notified which gives more power more value to the pharmacists value we have already seen during this pandemic time but also imagine that the power what you have you know when we think about pharmacists uh, the pharmacist was just used to do a community service job as a community pharmacist and his role was only limited to be out the hospital away from the doctor his direct interaction with the patient was much higher but his direct interaction with the patient was almost in the tune of zero but this pharmacy practice regulations will give more power and value to the pharmacist now because under this new regulations the registered pharmacist anything whether a community pharmacy or a clinical pharmacy or a hospital pharmacist can review the patient records and patient prescription this was not the power being available earlier now the ppr 2015 gives you that means when you can review the prescription when you can record review the records of the patient that means your role from outside the hospital has been brought in into inside the hospital now you are going to work shoulder to shoulder with that of the doctor otherwise this was not there thanks to pci for bringing up this 2015 regulations wherein the limitations what was there those barriers has been removed now the barriers that was there that you cannot interact much with the patient you cannot interact much with the doctor you cannot you don't have the power to substitute the prescription if a doctor writes some xyz brand of azithromycin you are supposed to give the same you are not been given any power at that time to substitute or give a different one or if you are noting it down that any patient who has come is allergic with one medication you didn't had the power earlier 
even to say that you are allergic, I cannot give this medication. But this 2015 PPR regulation, pharmacy practice regulations, has given the power. Even you, as a pharmacist, you can substitute that prescription or that medication provided you have to bring it the same to the knowledge of the doctor that you have prescribed this medication. I found that this so and so patient is having allergic with this medication. So apart, instead of that, I am giving so and so medication which is equivalent, which plays the same role and it is viable. You can give it and the doctor has to say yes, thank you so much. That's how the power that 2015 has given. And this will also allow you to interact, do counseling to the patient. This was not the part earlier. Now you have to do the counseling about the medication, how much the, the dosage, when to take the medication, how to take the medication, and you can have an interact personally. That has given the more power to the patient now. And because of that, I must say that rather than going now as a role of the community or the, or the hospital pharmacy, with this regulation, the more clinical power is being given to the pharmacist. Your involvement with the patient treatment is more now. You are caring to the safety of the patient is more now. That is, I'm sure that this is going to play a very vital role and feel proud with these regulations. So try to always remember the PPR 2015 regulations is the much powerful regulation. Now, you should know that with all the, you know, the opportunities, the demand being available, how you are going to plan your career. When I am talking about career, it is not about just pharmacy. In the pharmacy profession, what career you have to know? I am going to highlight the various opportunities that are available. You as a pharmacist, as an undergraduate pharmacy or B-Pharm or a PharmD, what field you can choose that you have to understand now. And I am going to highlight in that. Well, while choosing that career, you have to know that there are a lot of options and opportunities available. First and foremost, you should understand, there are plenty. What you want to do, you have to decide. All options, one thing you have to remember, because sometimes, many of many of the times, you will be confusing. It happens, when I go to a market, when I say that three varieties of apples, are, if one variety of apple is there, I buy it very easily. I just bargain it. If the price I have to bargain, I have to bargain it and I have to buy it. If I see ten varieties of apples, then I get confused. Which one I have to buy? Whether this, this, that, because almost ever every apple looks the same. Similarly, when it comes to the profession, there are a lot of opportunities available. And that's where the confusion starts creating to the pharmacy that in which field I should go. If I go over here, whether I'll be happy, whether I'll get more money, whether the stability is available, provided you need to more choosy about the interest what you have and how you have to develop the interest. For that, you have to know more about your own profession. Then only you can make a choice of what you want to be. And here one has to know that you need to choose your own career based on the, your knowledge, academically, your personality, how do you look into it, and the desire. How much you have the fire in you. Whether you can travel more, you have to take the job. Or you want something, oh, I just want to sit. I don't want to do anything. I want to sit on a chair and I want to do a job. Then you have to think about that. Then you will be having something where, yes, I have to meet different people. I would like to do some social service also. Then you have to look for your career accordingly. And you have got, <clears throat> I must say that this profession has got all sorts of opportunities. And you have to look into it. Well, I would like to highlight a few of them over here for you. Well, while you go across uh, to this pharmacy as a carrier, you need to understand that there are five distinctive advantages about our profession. One is that you have got the diverse career options. There are various, as I said, you want to choose. And I have seen few of the people twisting it across the line and joining to the one field of the pharmacy profession after one year. Again, you feel that, no, I am not enjoying it again. I have seen people just shifting from one filter to the other field of the pharmacy profession. Here what will happen, you lose your, you know, the value, you lose your tempo, you lose your, you know, the power of your knowledge, of your service. Don't do like that. Be very, very choosy in your, you know, the uh, selecting of your profession. But diverse career options are available. That's an advantage. Say if a civil engineer, if he does the engineering, his option is what? Can he go into some other field and he do no, civil engineer? He will be in construction only. 
probably his way of constructing the buildings will be different he may construct a railway bridge or he may construct the building but he has to get involved into it the in involvement of the you know the the cement uh, the metal everything remains same he has to struggle within that so similarly if a doctor is there if he is an ent doctor his limitation is only with the ear nose and throat he has to be limited in that field only but pharmacist you have got a different field you have to understand as a pharmacist you have got community pharmacy industrial pharmacy okay the hospital pharmacy clinical pharmacy these are all the demands that has expanded and these values are there so there is a diverse career options for you and more important in the pharmacy profession is that the work flexibility you need not be like a you know the general store fellow go open this time and all you can be a 24 hours you can have your own office you can have you know multiple you have got at your own pace you can work that's how the work flexibility is there most important the stability in your job show me one pharmacist who has completed the pharmacy profession and is jobless and i'm sure that nobody can such such type of a person who is jobless if that fellow is jobless probably he may be having his own personal issues with the family or some other thing he may not be having with the profession but i am sure 101 percent there is no such pharmacist available who has completed the course and is a jobless that means there is a hundred percent surety of the job and stability of the job and opportunity to help people that is where this is the only profession you feel a satisfaction for yourself like you join to community pharmacy the after giving medication to a patient and the next time when he comes as a healthy person feel the satisfaction that you will having it oh he was so serious i gave him the medication and today he's okay that's the satisfaction you are going to have it in the same way in the industry you know this is that pandemic time there were so many shortage of the medications remdesivir or amputerisin be whatever it may be the production team that has done day and night work and they provided the medication people who were dying after receiving the medication and thanking to the pharmacist the sigh of relief and the satisfaction that you will be having that's where you will have a social service also in your own job when you adapt to it and the respect that professional values that you get it that's how show me that someone who calls pharmacist means see in some of the professions we always hear oh that fellow he is so and so he is a thief we general use in our you know the technical word means to tell them as bad we tell that professional as a thief okay show me this anywhere people tell a pharmacist in a similar way it is impossible because the value that has been created and that has been done service by servicing we people that has earned more, much of the respect and that's how it has got it that's why the pharmacy profession is called as a white collar profession and that respect it is going to have it so it is a five advantages in every career in the profession that you take into the field that you take into the pharmacy profession you are going to have the more value well let me take you briefly because you all are knowing it but still some of some of the people will have you having it one fellow the other day he called sir i'm a farm uh, can i open a pharmacy store yes why not come in the pharmacy certain thing which has given a more value i must say that it's a face value when we talk about politician we we imagine that politician is a a, a top you know cap on his head and uh, he is having on a traditional indian attire that is how we see the politician and most importantly politician means the khadi you know the dress he is going to wear that's how we imagine when we when people talk about the pharmacy and the pharmacist they imagine the community pharmacist the person who works in a pharmacy store or in a medical store is been imagined anyone you ask even to a person to a student who comes to take the admission what is the job role of the pharmacist do you know yes sir opening medical store that's how the in a layman's language they answer that means the general perception of the public is that the pharmacy community pharmacy is a face value and anyone who is doing d form b form farm d or even m form or phd can open a pharmacy store and he can work in his own pharmacy store as a pharmacist the advantage over here is that you are going to be owner of that own pharmacy you are going to be the owner of that pharmacy you are going to be partner if you want to open in partnership you can open if not you can work in the pharmacy store which has been opened and we have seen that over the years the chain of pharmacies have come up like med plus apollo pharmacy 
and uh, there are many are coming like in tamil nadu there are amma pharmacies are available which has been opened by the state government and now throughout the country our honorable prime minister has started jan aushadhi kendra that is how the corporate as well as the chain of pharmacies that has come these pharmacies cannot run without the pharmacies that means you are going to work and work and earn in that and i have seen that in jan aushadhi where the government has started has given three options to the pharmacies either you can be owner by taking the loan you know there is a 3 lakh loan or the help sorry not loan the financial help this government of india or the government of you know the state government is going to provide 3 lakhs financial help to start the janoshadi kendra if you say that no no i don't want to be owner i want to be a partner in that the government will invest money and you become partner into that that is the advantage is also being given no no i don't want to open the pharmacy store i don't want to uh, you know be partner also in that janoshadi kendra i want to be an employee in that you can work as an employee also can you show me any one profession where the government is giving money and telling you become owner or you become employee or you become partner there is no such way it is the only pharmacy profession it is having and the government is providing it because to make it the affordable availability of medicines to the general public and in that the major role that is being played is by the pharmacy the manufacturing of the you know the uh, the medicines is being done generic medicines is being done by the pharmacy only and the distribution is done by the pharmacies and the retail pharmacy through the jan aushadhi kendra is also done by the pharmacies so hats off to all these pharmacies and like this is one area i must say that which has got more than 30 to 35% profit and show me one person who has opened a pharmacy store and is a you know uh, he is a very poor fellow you can't say that's how the money is involved into this pharmacy profession then hospital pharmacies the role of community pharmacy and hospital pharmacy is similar to that only but here in the hospital pharmacy the more of the you know the patients in patients or the patients who has visited to the hospital are going to visit to this pharmacy and here the general dispensing of medications do not happen here the medications happens against the prescriptions only and here the storage of medications will be very high because the number of patients be vis visiting every day will be very high the job role involves the same thing but here you must you cannot be an owner in a pharmacy until and unless you are own hospital but you can be part of this uh, corporate hospital the more advantage with the hospital pharmacy is that you will be having a professional uh, way of uh, network with the other healthcare professionals because the doctors will be directly interacting with you and asking okay can you can you tell me whether so and so brand of the medication is available in the pharmacy store can you tell me and the, probably nurses will come the physiotherapists will come and all the anesthetists we all also inquire that's how you will have the more of the professional working with the white collar professionals healthcare professionals in the hospitals okay the nursing homes where you will be having the pharmacies and the more of the corporate hospitals has got more value salaries are very high like uh, apollo hospitals fortis columbia asia in karnataka it is narayana rudala and in other states different different you know corporate hospitals are available and pharmacies are playing a major role more demand in the hospital pharmacies available now coming up to the greek clinical pharmacies i must say that the face value what i saw what i said now the face value of the community pharmacies with regarded in the pharmacy profession it is going to change over the period with the clinical pharmacies well with the starting of this group in 2008 with the pharmd course and also the pg courses in the clinical pharmacy or the pharmacy practice has given more power and value to the pharmacies as i told you the pharmacies roles were only limited outside the hospital either in the hospital pharmacy or in the community pharmacy but the roles has changed now the pharmacies are working along with the doctors and other healthcare professionals inside the hospital the role what is having of the doctor is equally having for the clinical pharmacies particularly the pharmdies and i must say that most of the corporate hospitals has already realized the value of this clinical pharmacies and without the clinical pharmacy even you know the nabh accreditation where the accreditation has to be taken by the hospital has made it mandatory of the availability of the clinical pharmacies in the hospitals in the ratio of i think uh, probably for 100 patient they need to have one clinical pharmacies so in all the corporate hospitals where 300 400 bedded is there you can see four to five clinical pharmacies and at present i must say that 
our clinical pharmacists who are pharmacists or mpharm or phd who has done in community or having the knowledge of the pharm medicines are going to play a major role and they are been hired apart from, and majorly i would like to say over here that this clinical pharmacists at present they are been you know as i said for 100 patients they are going to hire one clinical pharmacist probably minimum 300 bed and hospitals will be there three to four clinical pharmacists will be there but now the role of the clinical pharmacists is wide enough they are working for the doctors but over the years please mind it and note down my information what i am giving probably down the line after five to eight years i am seeing that there will be a departmental clinical pharmacists for ent there will be separate clinical pharmacists for uh, gynecology there will be separate clinical pharmacists for uh, pediatrician there will be separate clinical pharmacists for general medicine there will be separate clinical pharmacists that means the clinical pharmacy which we are teaching them how to be expert into the all the medicines it is very wide enough they have to become expert probably after farm d you need to or during your internship the department what you choose like pediatrics or six months or more or one year experience if you are taking it it will be cancer then you become a clinical pharmacy specialist in cancer that's how it is going to happen so all those clinical pharmacists today who are attending this webinar this lecture on the you know the career scope they have to remember that over the years it is going to create the demand and you are going to have the value and you have to become the valuable to it and apart from this as a clinical pharmacist in the corporate and uh, many of them were asking it that sir clinical pharmacy can you open the clinic yes you can open your own clinic but not you know consultation clinic counseling clinic you can open you have to do counseling that's where your job stands whatever i talk to a patient if the patient feels confident on me and the day will come the doctors will say before meeting me you please you have to meet me a clinical pharmacist and then come to me whatever the clinical pharmacist reports to me about your history of the disease based on that i am going to treat your you know the patient that's going to happen down the line provided we clinical pharmacists grow to that level of the expectation here what is required more is that the clinical pharmacist should be more aware of the medication the adrs that are causing and the disease that are happening see if we could able to see over the last three four months what is happening the first time we told that remdesivir is an active we saw there were two publications in lancet which has been published by the indian doctors and that became reference for throughout the world later it has been found that those references were manipulated and it was not authentic and again the lancet recalled those two papers that's where our knowledge cannot be based on the you know the theoretical way our knowledge has to be based on the practical way so the more you get involved into the practical activities your expert experience gives more to the field to grow and your value and if i say that you can create more your valuable you know the face it is only because you have got the power word power is required you need to talk more to the patient then only you can create your value you need to talk more about the disease and the medication to the doctor then only doctor will be dependent on you if you are silent enough you don't know anything about medicine at all and you want to play a major role as a clinical pharmacist sorry even if i stand there as a owner of the hospital or as a doctor i will not recognize such a pharmacist so what is required over here is that your knowledge about the medicine and the disease and to solve those problems that becomes very much important today no doubt we are using in most of the pharmd colleges the drug database software you should become one of the drug database in your knowledge you should be hub of a knowledge when you know doctor has any you know requirement of the medicine knowledge he should immediately call to a clinical pharmacist i have i have seen one or two clinical pharmacists who were you know earlier days started you know joined this course and now today they have expertise one such i know that one of the clinical pharmacists is expert in the tb medications okay medications that are being used in the tuberculosis most of the doctors throughout the india they call him and take a note of it how to prescribe in such type of resistance of this so and so medication you know there is a lot of resistance is more in tuberculosis and there the change of the medication brand and the molecule keeps changing to it and the doctor has to be more cautious about prescription and if you are gaining more knowledge about the medication i must tell that i must tell that you are going to be the rolling point
well this is one area where the clinical pharmacist is has clinical pharmacist has become an alternative for the general medicine doctors one such we have seen that earlier in the clinical trials uh, of all types of phases where the doctors particularly the pharmacologists used to take part now the clinical pharmacists are being hired and they have become the part of you know carrying out the clinical trials that's one of the great sign and great opportunity that's an area where you can look forward to get a lot of money and many multinational companies are coming forward and you must say that apple almost almost 300 pharmaceutical companies we have got and 10500 manufacturing plants almost in that 3000 hardly maybe having 100 companies the clinical trial facility all the other companies are not trying to come up with the clinical trial facility there is a huge requirement of the you know the clinical pharmacists so get ready to acquire to those you know the jobs as a clinical pharmacist you have got you know every hospital and probably in the coming days we see the job availability even in the government sector in the government hospitals huge huge area for the pharmacists get ready guys to acquire to this you know to these jobs i must say that there is huge and this is the flagship base value of the pharmacy profession i must say that that's how the pharmacy profession is going to create more value to it we have industrial pharmacy i don't have to tell because the industrial pharmacy has shown this during this lockdown period that there is a more value to it and anyone who is having more of the research what i have told about the clinical we have got research and development r and d also you can plan up and in industry pharmacy it's all about you making up yourself and uh, one thing i must say that though in industrial pharmacy the initially the payment is going to be less but over the period the multiplication of the salaries the payment that happens within a span of 5 to 8 years the perks what they provide is is, is excellent and i must say that this is one area which people can plan anyone who is with the d form b form m form farm d and farm d b b and phd people can go across and you can choose there are various areas in the industry also the first and foremost is going to be the storage in the industry then production you have got the regulatory in that also how you need to know the sops of the production you need to know export which you do you need to know the regulation of the one country to the other country that knowledge you need to have you have got in that and research and development and then clinical uh, in that the uh, quality control test that is being carried out all these areas that comes in the industry apart from that as i told you clinical trials even the phds or the mforms can look into it above all the bigger advantage from the industry pharmacy the pharmaceutical marketing wherein there is a huge huge money where you enjoy to it i was i was part of both in the production i was there in the marketing i really enjoyed my profession i must say that i have seen all forms with the education you know i was choosing my profession according to my progress as i was leading across to the profession i have chosen and there is a wonderful you know this profession has you will enjoy to it and academic pharmacies i really say that this is one area where if you really want to be at peace of mind this is one of the area you love it and you gain the popularity because your fan base is your own students and that's how this valuable it is and we know that athiti you know the guru is always the you know the been regarded as the god in our country and that's how his role is major isn't it so for uh, i must say that guru dev guru brahma guru vishnu guru maheshwara that's how it has been said all the gods guru is been correlated to it and teaching has got more valuable and uh, that as the teaching is changing into a different forms we used to have the black board now we used to have the ohp then we had got the white board we had got the powerpoint now we are having the virtual e classrooms we are going to have the studio classrooms that's how it is changing that's where you love it if you have the word power interaction do choose this and you have got more of the value to create your own word power and medical writing is an ad additional area where you can choose it to it all the medical information related flyers or the you know the leaflets that comes it is all the past being prepared and that's the great area very good valuable and you need to have a lot of knowledge and here i must say that all the drug related information whatever you see now all the the content that was there earlier hard copies i do remember since was the only available for a pharmacist if he is if a person was not getting any type of medication then sims was nothing but it's like a dictionary to find out what are the other brands available the substitutes and the prices what to be given 
that was how it is available a small leaflet been compressed and it was available that as a book now its entire content is been converted into e even now general public are seeing the medical information go just type in to google like uh, what is what for the amputation b is being used you will get the full form of full information knowledge that is been provided by the pharmacy so that's how because the patient has also become more of the educated now there was a days when patient used to come and follow to the instructions of the doctors and whatever the pharmacies used to give, give and used to take today he asks 10 questions before buying any medication or before visiting to a doctor that means our profession has transformed and in this case our knowledge plays a very important role that's where the medical writing has got more value because every content has become e content and e content available to general public earlier we used to provide this e content to doctors now this e content is available to doctors to the patients to imagine the scope how it has elaborated and it has reached to the general public well government services are available who doesn't want the government service there are a lot of government services in every sector and uh, i must say the regulatory is a major one where the government sector has got a very vital and important role being played like drug inspector drug analyst which is being you know very very you know the cream of the cream field of the pharmacy profession i must say that okay you can work for who usmpa indian pharmacopeia commission and you can work for as a pharmacist in indian railways you can work for crp as a pharmacist cdrl cftri even in defense of the indian uh, our country's different friends who are working in the defense of the dubai okay as a pharmacist so that means the scope is wide enough and i must say that the advantage with the pharmacy profession is that it's a white collar it's not a labor service job it is a white collar job much many 90% of the jobs is by only sitting at one place and doing your job interacting with the people providing knowledge show me one profession where you are sitting and doing it even the doctors has to put efforts as a surgeon he has to go and put efforts and every sweat it out that's how more about the pharmacy profession that value has been created is all because of the information and technology where the software companies got into the pharma sector and has created more value many of you might be seeing that our pharmacists are telling sir i am working from home how pharmacists is working from home it is because our profession has transformed we have evolved and you know more of the value because the, the western countries are dependent on the pharmacists and they want to take more service whether it is a medical writing whether it is a medical prescri prescription pharmacovigilance all these things has created more value and because software companies got involved into it that's how the value has created more and our people are been paid in accordance with that of that never thought that pharmacies initially will get 30 35000 rupees now it is very easy you join to any of the you know the pharmacovigilance company or as a medical prescriptionist you easily get it 20 25000 rupees starting and within a span of 1 to 2 years based on your performance you can reach to 50000 rupees which was not possible if you are working as a pharmacist in a community hospital or any other line of the field but there is a huge demand that has been created and you can look into it i must say that if you are more having knowledge about the computers and you want to be with that technology probably everyone in this pandemic has become the software engineer with the usage of the gadgets probably this is the area where you can uh, you know look into of joining to it and there is a huge demand to it and more important is that i have seen is that our own people have become the you know the uh, software engineers because the drug database software or the e pharmacies which are now available or telemedicine services which you know you never thought that the patient will call to you and ask that i want so and so medicine can i take this medicine and not not this was not possible probably this pandemic has taught and it has brought an early usage of the gadgets or the technology and that has also evolved and brought in more of the value to the profession that's where i said private ownership of the drug database many of them many of the pharmacists who are having good knowledge about the medication and the technology about the software and all has developed many of the drug database software and they are doing wonderful company and you can start your own company software company also well you should remember that 
what are the challenges in this profession in the pharma profession you are all students now you may not realize many of the things that okay uh, the challenges is that okay i am a clinical pharmacist i will get very easily job because my uh, academic credentials are very high i am a first rank i got eight rank uh, so and so sorry that is not going to be considered that is only a way for you to enter into an interview hall or the door inside the door what matters is that the job checking rules that the changes that has happened you have to realize community pharmacy is not all about just giving medication to your patient the job rules has changed now that is what i have told you how because of the involvement of the technology because of the changing rules and the dependency of the doctors on the pharmacists the job rules has changed and the use of technology in profession as i said the technology has become part and parcel of life in every field in education in the software it was there and now in medical field it has adapted we we heard earlier that a, a surgeon uh, a cardiac surgeon staying in us has done the cardiac surgery or heart transplant in india that we heard the technology was only limited to the medicine field but that has also come to the pharmacy field also telemedicine is the another service that is been available we have got the e pharmacies that have come up you never see that the pharmacy is available in the road side but they are they can send the medicines at an affordable cost with more discounts this has available this is a bigger challenge are you ready to take up these challenges you have to know to it and that's how the challenges have come up and i just wanted to show that what challenges changes and challenges are available i have just shown the pictures this pictures is what to explain anything that means our robots are going to play the important role if you are not going to play the role robots will play the role whether you want that to happen no in that case robot you have to operate but robot will work as per your directions that is where your role is being more easy made and that's where we, it is going to play a very important role because in our business practice the innovations have started with the technology we have got the e verification system earlier a patient used to come and give a prescription to a pharmacist pharmacist used to wait and uh, you know there was a saying that whatever the doctor writes it is only pharmacists who understand that was the myth people are having it now it is going to get eradicated that also because we are going to have the e verification system if doctor wants to write some medications it is happening already he has to send an e prescription he will send a mail to you which is been linked to a software or a particular you know the related system to which that prescription you have to honor it by giving medications to the patient that means here the technology involvement is there pill counters we never had it though this is there in most of the western countries we may not require now because we are already having the pre filled medications probably we may not require but still this is an advantage that has come over here tele pharmacy services as i told you you know earlier there was no such but a village person staying in village can get communicated to a pharmacist in the rural in the urban areas and ask for so and so from the medicine the, the, the telemedicine service will help to get services of the tele pharmacy that's where it is been linked patient does have never met to a doctor physically but patient is been examined by the doctor and the pharmacist has never met to the patient and the pharmacist is dispensing the medications based on the directions e prescriptions of a telemedicine doctor to a tele pharmacy that's how we are having the e pharmacy system digital apps as i told you <coughs> earlier when whatever the medication today you just search it over there the the search engine as per the google has thousand times of the medications been searched by the people particularly remdesivir uh, the amphotericin b and all the vitamins whatever it is been told in the pandemic time all these things is directing to particular app that app will help you to know more about the medication not only about the medication it also gives about the parameters today i don't have to go and check check my you know the pulse by taking the equipment i just have to download one app put it my finger it gives all my pulse all my you know the blood sugar level everything you know that's how the apps have been created and these apps have been created by engineers or by pharmacists but these are all the technologies that are available and this technology is part going to part of our profession uh, i should know that what are the parameters in which these apps work as a pharmacist then only i can solve more of the issues artificial intelligence as i told you probably in future 
this is going to be the you know the uh, the need of carrying out the business whether it is a medicine general business or any other thing as i have told you the general business has already started people just go to a store general store and without any knowledge what it is having in his refrigerator and all through the artificial means he gets all the groceries that are required to his house okay similarly medicines are going to happen similarly teacher is going to you know understand what difficulty the student is having with the artificial intelligence these are all the technologies that are going to play a very important role i spoke about the medicine well 3d printing a patient today is taking 10 medications for cardiovascular disease diabetes he is having constipation he is having acidity problem and if you just go and see before taking food he will be having 10 to 12 medications more than food he will be eating food there is a time going to come with this 3d printing technology where in those all those 10 medications will be converted into one medication with the help of the 3d printing and that patient takes only one medication down the line it is going to happen and for that we need to be prepared as a pharmacist how much about the 3d printing i have the knowledge how much about the artificial uh, artificial intelligence i have the knowledge you need to be prepared that's where the area has created more value and this is one of the area that has you know a, you know has come up where the pharmacist can take up and the profession is going to transform i must say that if you do not adapt then you will get perished you will be kicked from the system and the pharmacy profession will be taken over there was already been said that pharmacy e pharmacy there was an objection from many people that e pharmacy system should be you know removed it, it is creating lot of problem devalue i would like to say that all those pharmacy stores which are there at the road side should get converted into the e pharmacy that is what it is going to happen in future that's where well i am showing over here the different roles of the pharmacists are numerous we are researchers we are academicians we are community we are you know we are clinical pharmacists we are helping the doctors in prescribing the medication medications we are helping the doctors in giving the you know providing the drug data about the medicines that's where we are playing the major role amongst all these things what is required for you people because i have taken few of the things which you should become a rolling point for the industry the most important thing is the communication skill if your communication skill is not proper enough i'm sorry you are unfit for the profession for any type of field because communication is the key for innovation of employment if you want to be an expert your communication communication when i say it is not about how do you talk it is all about how do you keep up like today it is been said that the, the webinar is going to start at 4 o'clock this it is a communication you all have been informed through the messages well in advance about the registration you did and at 4 o'clock you join if you join at 4:30 then you are losing the information that there is a lacking behind the communication that's where the communication involves so many things that's where but our as a pharmacist our communication has to be very important because we are not going to communicate about communicate about hi bye we are talking about the medicine what you give information to the patient what you give information to a doctor it becomes very very important you are one wrong information about the medication may take the life of the patient that's how your communication has to be very important during this process well before i go for conclusion i would like to say that to all my pharmacy students okay fellow pharmacists there is there has to be positivity in you the positivity is that have pride in how far you have come you all have joined already pharmacy profession if there is a 1% of negativity also please remove it and talk about positivity and feel pride pride proud for yourself yes i have joined a profession which is going to give me the strength energy and i can make the difference for my country with my services and how pay in how far you can go to i have given you know extensive data to you that how the demand is available i am sure that both these are going to make you realize that how valuable you are you need to have three things if you want to have a successful career one is that start with a positive mind whatever you have come to this profession have positivity in way think about more about the profession and then be ready that something employers actually want what i i said that today i told that employers want your knowledge of the you know the communication your your skills of communication your knowledge of the technology that is all it is required today 
a person should know 10 works. There was a time where one person was had for one work and he used to do all the things. Today, a one person should know everything. Today, a pharmacy should know and engineer, you know, the computers, a computer, everything about all these things as are about profession. So, a person should know actually what employers needed and try to spend more time. Now, you are a pharmacist, you are a student, try to spend more time on skill and knowledge. I am going to tell you that if you do so, you are going to be the rolling coin in the industry. You don't have to bother about the job. The job will come to your doorstep, whatever may be the job. And the more you are valuable, the more opportunities are for you. And to create yourself valuable, get expertise into your own field. You should know the difference about it. Well, I would like to conclude with the word being said by the Nelson Mandela. He said, a winner is a dreamer who never gives up. So if you want to be a winner, you dream it and try to see that how your dreams can come to try to look into all these aspects. Well, I would like to conclude. Thank you so much to the Climate Research Solutions, especially to the CEO and the founder, Dr. Ajit J. Singh, for giving me an opportunity to be present in the midst of the, you know, the wonderful students who are interested as part of the Climate Summer School, which is conducting uh, by taking the leadership as the dialogues and happy and proud to be part of this wonderful activity of the Climate Summer School. As a leader, I'm sure the knowledge that I have given today is going to help a lot of the new people. With this, I would like to conclude. Thank you, Dr. Ajit, once again, and thank you to all the attendees who have taken part. Thank you. Jai. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Ajit. Thank you very much, sir. It was a very, very informative and a wonderful uh, session. Very, very good session. And I hope now our pharmacists, our uh, you know fellow students, they must have learned. They must have clear about all the uh, you know uh, uh, scopes after their pharmacy degree in government jobs, in defense, in you know all the banking system, all the paramilitary and other other resources. As they always ask me, sir, do we have any? Uh, you know, do we have any scope in the government? So today, I hope they are uh, very clear and they are clear about the industry. They are clear about the medical writing and such a wonderful session you delivered, sir. Wonderful session. So now I would like to ask our students to uh, interact with you. They can talk to you. They can clear uh, their doubts. And there are a few questions in chat Hello, box. Sir. I would like. To... Yes, yes, yes. Hello, sir. I am Muhammad Sadr Sharif. Good evening, sir. Sir, yeah. uh, like you said, uh, we being pharmacists have a responsible provision, which is as often practiced. Uh, in our clinical professions like dispensing and uh, formulating and we know the pa patient care which represents uh, growth in a profession of uh, clinical uh, approaches uh, is very much significant and the treatment uh, is very much based upon the diagnostic profile uh, and even the intensity of the disease. However, under critical circumstances, we can't just wait for that. So as soon as we get to know the condition provisionally, can clinical pharmacists give you service like with the principle of emergency use of medications and uh, can he involve himself in diagnosis uh, because uh, we uh, being pharmacists use a uh, radio pharmaceuticals there uh okay dr sadat uh, i would like to say over here is that first and foremost see whenever you are in any profession or you are in any other country you need to follow to the rule the rule of law, whatever says, you have to follow. The rule says that you cannot get involved into diagnostic treatment or writing of prescription. First, you have to understand. Probably in the coming days, if you, as I have told you, in the next five to eight years, there is going to be more value for the pharmacist, especially the clinical pharmacists. Because clinical pharmacists where the doctors are going are getting more dependent now. The doctors have now realized that it is clinical pharmacist which is now going to save me. You know, the doctor has seen himself as a safeguard. He was under threat that, okay, if I write a wrong prescription, I am going to be under suit. Now with the guidance of the clinical pharmacist, the doctor has become safe. And I have seen that wherever the presentation of the value, the role of the clinical pharmacist has been given to the doctors, they have already understood, yes, this is what it is required. 
and we need because everyone wants a safeguard. You know, if somebody is there as a security for me, I will always feel relaxed. Similarly, in the medical field, it is there. But as far as the diagnosis of particular diseases in emergency and all, it is being considered. I have seen already my own students have been permitted by few of the doctors, though it is not there in the regulation. But they say, okay, you sit and write the prescription. And they have taken them in, even into the, uh, you know, into the uh, operation theater to assist them during the surgery also. It has happened in many of the cases. But these are all, you know, not been permitted. You can be a role for playing along with the doctor. But when it comes to the, you know, taking part, you can guide to a doctor during anesthesia being injected to a surgery patient how one drug can react with the another drug and can produce the side effect that knowledge you can give provide however it is being seen that during emergency medicines also the medicines that are being provided especially during poisoning here majorly many of the doctors plays uh, you know the, the wrong roles and you have to play you can play along with the doctor not as an alone you can diagnose but with the supervision availability of the doctors you can do and this is going to happen for that involvement and the working and in law i must say that it is one simple word if i would like to say your all roles should be along with the doctors you cannot be at the forefront and act the doctor has to be at the forefront and with shoulder to shoulder or along with the drug you can do the clinical diagnosis the thing is that you can direct the doctor sir you can write this prescription you can write the prescription so and so in this disease this is this parameter is changing you write this drug or you give this injection but the thing is that you directly cannot write a prescription and say that okay i have written this prescription you give this drug you can't do it this is unlawful and this is not being given probably in future as there is a huge demand is growing the pharmacist value has already you know the telangana government has written and even our own honorable vice chancellor of rajiv gandhi university has written to utilize the services of the clinical pharmacists in emergency medicine also even in hospitals probably in the coming days with the growing numbers and the requirements see ultimately what is required the safety of the patient if the safety of the patient in which if the clinical pharmacist is playing major role you will be recognized and you will be regarded and you will be taken into course as of now presently you can get involved but only with the with the supervision of the doctor thank you sir yes okay so sir i will take two questions uh, what masters degree should be done for becoming a ph clinical pharmacist aziza is asking so yeah 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 if if uh, if she has done b pharm then she can do uh, in some of the universities it is there as m pharm pharmacy practice you can join yes. m pharm pharmacy practice to become the clinical pharmacist otherwise in some of the universities they have they are running as clinical pharmacy only may m pharm yeah. in clinical pharmacy there are three courses by which you can become a clinical pharmacist in masters one is m pharm pharmacy practice another one is m pharm clinical pharmacy which is of two to years course there is another yeah. one thing which is called as pharm d pb pharm d post baccalaureate yeah. that is a three years course and here in pharm d post baccalaureate the more of the clinical experience will be given to you because one year internship is there if you ask me sir what do you advise i advise you go for pharm d pb because you get a clinical hands on training as being in internship along with the doctors whereas it is not there with m pharm whether it is in pharmacy practice or clinical pharmacy you may get more knowledge about the areas but those who do pharm d pb they will be more clinical oriented and expert in the medications exactly Yes. Any questions? Yes. So, uh, anyone else? Anyone who have the question? Okay. So we'll take uh, one more question. Yes, clinical pharmacist job roles are there in public sector also, as sir has described well. Sir, can we do uh, doc? in medicine uh, after doing pharm d uh, sir that i could not hear you once again can you tell me sir can we get into the pro profession where uh, doctorate in uh, medicine can be done after pharm d uh, your voice is breaking 
can you did you hear uh, uh, no, dr kadir sir sir yes sir, he is asking that sir, can we, we do a doctor medicine after form d general medicine you are dealing sir. yes md sir no. that, that is a different field you have to understand when you are in a highway from the bangalore to hyderabad you cannot go to delhi into a different route yes. you have to go be in the same route and always remember this that the 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 thing what is there in your mind because you are more inclined towards the doctor see you keep the role of the doctor to himself you get into your role as i told you almost about to the tune you know, of one and a half hour i wanted to tell that we are more valuable let the doctor yes. realize that why i have not studied pharmacy profession let us not feel that why i have to go and do the general medicine your role is more see that the things are changing now in clinical trials where the general medicine particularly the pharmacology people used to be hired now the clinical pharmacists particularly pharmd people are being hired because the pharmd people are more dedicated and more valuable so our role is different i cannot i don't want to be into the shoes of a doctor and doctor cannot be into my shoes as a pharmacist let us keep them separate so that is a different role you cannot there is no such rule where you can have an interdisciplinary provided if that is the course that more of the engineer will say that i want to study pharmacy after my engineering i will do mpharm can i permit them no so we have to realize we have our own different roles let us be in that role only thank you sir exactly and uh, for that i will uh, you know give a technical answer people you know think that uh, if they go for uh, you know md they will get into the medical field but that's not like that you know in india definitely it is not permitted it is not at all permitted right and if you want to go to us or canada people come to me and they ask sir can we go to uh, canada or us and want to do md so i'll tell you guys it is there in us and canada it is 5 years course md which is equivalent to membi yes actually which is equivalent to mbbs and you have to start from the scratch that you would have done after 12 only you know you would have done after us why you are going now after family after uh, you know investing your 6 years why you are going now if you are uh, really interested in uh, you know uh, md from outside you could have go before uh, for uh, you know uh, md or you have start mbbs in india so if you are in your profession now if you are in pharmd then you should uh, you know definitely uh, not into uh, you should not look into the different way as sir is telling rightly you should be you know uh, look forward for uh, your future in the pharmd as well after pharmd you will be assisting them definitely and you will be in the medicine field you will have i think more knowledge than doctors yeah. okay sir yes okay, a question uh, yes please good go, good ahead. Evening, uh, go ahead uh, good evening sir uh, good evening sir i am a fifth year pharmd student um yeah, what i'd like to ask is uh, how can i i am which all areas should i work upon to develop myself as a clinical pharmacist so that i can so that i can provide more value added service to the upcoming healthcare system uh, uh, well uh, jopi uh, you you are a pharmd and you know that pharmd curriculum itself is been made in such a way that uh, you get expertized into that area one such is that uh, you know right from second year onwards you will be visiting the hospital and you are being taught how to interact with the patient you will be taught how to interact with the doctor and major that you are playing is that to give away the information about adrs that are being reported during your practice or availability of the hospital one such you have to remember there are three things which is very important one is the area of communication communication if you are from any of the state you should know the local language because you will be interacting with the patient your that's where i have spoken today your communication skill communication means your knowledge about interacting with the patient your knowledge about interacting with the doctor because you cannot you know interact with the same yes sir you are hearing na yes sir yes okay. yes yes sir yes sir yeah yeah because just now i saw something uh, you are uh, you are getting connected okay so your knowledge your communication knowledge with that of the patient with the doctor is major important second thing your knowledge about the medicine see what you are studying during your curriculum is like classification of so and so drug 
so and so drug is being used and so and so drug is being used do you think that practically when you implement into hospital you are going to be a clinical pharmacist no practically it is different there you will here in theoretically you will not be taught how much dose per ml per you know these seconds you are required to inject and all these are all not been taught whereas when you go to hospital you learn about it so your knowledge about medication becomes very very important because that's where the doctor will be weak enough in his understanding doctor is not a knowledgeable in that field he is a trained in that field the moment he comes into a clinical practice he starts knowing about the medication and the whatever the medical store uh, sorry the medical representative comes and provides the information to the doctor based on that he starts utilizing his knowledge into the clinical practice but whereas the pharmd is with the knowledge and with the practice tries to develop and learn that these are so and so areas has been reported and it gives alert to the doctors not to prescribe those medications so one is your communication skill third is your knowledge about the medication in every aspect you should know either you become expert in pediatrics drugs or you become expert in gynecology or in orthopedy something or you should have general area into which you should be expert enough so that is how you have to choose the third one is that the most important is about the, the you know the expertization to which you are going to take up particularly i have seen that the pharmacies what they do is that they they disconnected yes he is connecting no worries no worries sir definitely no worries Okay, so guys, do you have any um, any other questions to sir? Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, yeah. good evening. So this is Abdul Kadir, fourth pharmacy student. Sir, uh, as a clinical pharmacist, the course initiated like onco fellowship. What is uh, your role and responsibility of clinical pharmacist, sir, after a fellowship program? that is initiated for 2 years uh, like in tata memorial hospital it is initiated uh abdul kadir it is uh, sir voice is not coming sir sir your voice can you can you hear me yes yes sir. yes we can yeah it is initiated by tata and shortly probably it is also going yeah demands has started and tata was also there they are having one year fellowship and even Uh, our own university raju gandhi is going to start fellowship in oncology yes, and yes, uh, the purpose of starting is that you know that oncology is certain is a field where uh, it's not everyone's domain if i am a pharmacist i cannot say that okay i am an expert in so and so medication i have to have an experience of that similarly the medicine field if you see they have not divided the role maybe probably when i was the you know the young and the child days only one doctor used to be a gynecologist pediatrician general medicine everything he was but yes. over the years the roles have changed that in a similar way the oncology doctor when it is there oncology doctor a physician is there oncology surgeon is there similarly the yes. oncology pharmacist is to be there that's how the field has been elaborated because you know that in oncology every medication has to go with very lot of precautions to be given otherwise that patient may develop the Uh, you know the the resistance even a very short period of time and you lag behind the the drawback with oncology medications being given is this and here you know we don't have a separate subject to teach to people as oncology expert so we need to have a separate degree as fellowship and that's where it is being started people who does probably in india it may not be recognized but the people who do oncology in uh, fellowship or in post graduation or any other one year you know the uh, programs uh, they are more in demand in western countries because the trials that are going on for cancer there is you know that there is no such cure still for cancer that the medications that are being used should cure the disease and in order to cure the disease we need experts in every domain medicine nursing or the pharmacists so you become expert into that and you become a very much helpful in development of the medications or cure for the disease so it's a demand uh, i can say that uh, probably uh, in india particularly uh, particularly if you are expert in oncology 
then uh, the demand for getting jobs in the area of the expert as a clinical pharmacist grows more high and you become expert into it otherwise as such i can say research is the next field to which the demand gets created but not just oncology you become specialist in diabetologies you become more valuable you become specialist in cardiovascular medications you become more valuable you become expert in neuro diseases you become expert as a pharmacist in that area so i must say that it is one of the domain where you become expert one such example i have given one of the pharmacists is now being regarded as one of the expert in the tuberculosis medications and tb medications and he has been called by many general physicians and that's how you become expert in the oncology so every a domain field into which you get expert you have more value to it so become expert in it i suggest you become expert in the coming days the clinical pharmacist will have department wise you become the clinical pharmacist for the oncology department that's how the demand is been created okay sir thank you sir exactly okay so uh, guys last one question if anyone uh, wants to talk to sir okay so after uh, excuse before, me sir yeah, yeah, yes abha yes please speak uh, sir i am from second year farm d yes abha um, sir, uh, sir as of in uh, us and canada uh and australia we have uh, seen uh, development in the post of a clinical pharmacist like they are uh, uh, evolved in uh, changing the prescription and uh, they give uh, advice to the doctors work with the other professionals as such and uh, will it be uh, uh, can we see in india also these things uh saba i told you in my lecture probably you might have missed or you might have not noticed i told you ppr 2015 pharmacy practice regulation 2015 that has empowered not just to you as a farm d even to a community pharmacy d farm b farm anybody else they can change the prescription but remember in our country the power of what is there in us and other western countries is not been given to the pharmacists they yes. they understand the severity probably because i have seen many of the students will not learn to that level what they learn in other country probably our own student when they go to the us he follow to the rules and regulations of the universities or the colleges that are being given where they don't do it in india so there is a limitation of power but the what you asked me that can a pharmacist get the power to prescribe uh, sorry to substitute a medication change the prescription it is already there in our india with 2015 ppr regulation but is all changes has to be done with the consent and knowledge of the doctor you cannot say okay doctor has written so and so and i am giving this medication so you take this only you cannot do it you have to do see that's what i said you need to have a friendly activity with the other healthcare professionals then only you will also grow and the medical profession will become more much safer for the patient yes even in australia and canada you cannot change the medicine without the consent of doctors because this is a collaborative work this is yeah. a collaborative work so you can do it in india as well okay guys so further questions we will email to sir thank and you. we can get the answer thank you sir okay thank you very much sir for your time i think we have spent around 2 hours thank you very much for joining us and uh, almost 160 students have joined and you know got inspired and they got a very very uh, you know great information from your lecture so thank you everyone for joining thank you sir for joining thank you very much thank you everyone take care and have a nice day thank you yes thank you sir thank you very much yes take care everyone bye take care everyone yeah Thank you.